Hey everyone, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, I'd like to go over an update video of my Windows-based Linux development environment. Uh, a couple of years ago, I threw together a video where I showcased how you can run Linux on Windows using a VMware-based VM setup. And that was pretty cool. I mean, the tools back then are, you know, it's what we had. And I used that setup for full-time web development for like a solid four years straight. But as of the last year or so, I've completely altered my development environment. You know, back then I was running Windows 7 with a VMware-based setup, but now I am running Windows 10 Pro and I am using WSL, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux. If you happen to be running Windows 10 Home, Student, or Enterprise Editions, you can still install WSL, so don't worry about it. In this video, we're going to be going over a high-level overview of all of the tools that I have that really make you productive as a web developer where you need to run Linux on Windows. There's not going to be any need to install virtual machines or dual boot or do anything crazy like that. Also, I'm not going to try to sell you on Windows. Like, if you're using Windows, you have your reasons. Like, for me, I need a really good video editing tool, and I would love to run Linux natively, but there's just no good video editing tools on Linux, so I am using Windows. As for my hardware, there's also nothing really too crazy going on here. I just had the same old i5 quad core that I've been running for the last four or five years. 16 gigs of RAM, SSD, etc. It was like, I don't know, 800 bucks in parts five years ago when I bought all the stuff off Amazon and Newegg. Anyways, let's get into the good stuff, which is the terminal setup. So I'm going to go down here and just click my terminal shortcut window, which brings up the default WSL terminal for Ubuntu 18.04. That's because I am running Ubuntu 18.04, which you can download from the Windows Store. This is running inside of WSL, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux. Now, if you look at this terminal, I don't know, it's not that it looks bad, but it looks pretty bare bones, right? It's like, where's the tabs? Or, you know, how can you split these windows in half? And the answer to that is I run Tmux. Uh, Tmux is a terminal multiplexer, and we're not going to get into the gory details of what Tmux is or, you know, how all the configurations work. But what it does allow you to have are tabs and split panes. For example, down here, we're in one tab, right? But if I hit a hotkey here, which I need to keep looking down for because my mic setup right now is a little weird and my arms are all over the place, but we can see now that we have two different tabs and I can switch between them by hitting a hotkey. But also let's say that I want to split these windows in half. I can just do that and now I have a vertical split and I can start typing any commands that I want. I can use hotkeys to jump left, right, left, right, or I can use the mouse. Or maybe if I want to split this horizontally, so now I have a different pane open and I, and I can go through all of these. And now as I hit different hotkeys on my keyboard, you know, I'm able to switch between tab number one and tab number zero. And this is a pretty nice setup. Notice how fast those tabs open too. Like everything just feels super snappy and it's really, really instant. Now, this is also a pretty cool thing too at Tmux. You know, let's say that I'm typing away in this bottom right pane and, you know, I don't want to see these other panes at all. I can just hit something like, uh, you know, a hotkey or whatever, and it just zooms into that one tab. And then I can hit that hotkey again, and now we're back in business. Like, Tmux, in my opinion, is, it's an amazing tool. Like, it's crazy to think. Like, I don't know when it really got released. Maybe it was like, I don't, no, I don't even want to guess, but it was a long ass time, like probably five, 10 years or something like that, even more. Uh, it's really a powerful tool. And combined with a WSL terminal, you get a really fast terminal and really great support with Tmux. Like, that's why I'm not using terminals like Hyper or Terminus or Connie MU. Like, I tried all those and yeah, didn't work out for me. Another really cool thing about Tmux is, uh, you know, let's say that you close your terminal. Like, uh-oh, SpaghettiOs, I just lost all of that work. Or did I? And this is a real problem with Windows, right? It's like you go to bed at night, done with your computer, and then Windows is like, hey guys, I'm going to reboot your computer because I am a jerk face. And then you come back to like just a rebooted computer and you're, all of your progress, all of your windows are open and they're no longer open, right? Because you just woke up to a rebooted computer thanks to Windows. Well, with Tmux, that problem goes completely away. Like now I just opened up a new terminal and we're back to the default terminal, Tmux isn't loaded. But if I do a Tmux LS, we can see that, oh, hello there. You know, we still have that terminal session open and everything is just as we left it before. 
Now, when it comes to rebooting, you're not going to get that out of the box with Tmux. Uh, I did install a extension called Tmux Resurrect that allows you to load a previously loaded session between, uh, you know, if the Tmux server gets completely shut down. Anyways, all that stuff's in my dot files and blog posts and, it, you know, the gory details are there if you want to see how to configure it. The idea is, though, it all just works and it's freaking amazing. So there's a lot of stuff that I have installed that composes my development environment. And all of this is like an unscripted video. I'm kind of just going through things as I go. So one thing I do want to show you, though, before we go into everything is if you go to nickgenetakis.com slash uses, this is a blog post that I threw up that has a list of everything that I have installed, you know, with links to click and blog posts, etc. Then we're kind of just going to walk through this file a little bit and I'll show you some of these tools as we go. So as expected or not expected, you know, as we talked about before, this is a high level video. So let's go through all of these things one by one, but not get stuck in the woods on the details. So yes, I am running Windows 10 Pro with WSL. There's also this other tool here called MOBA Xterm uh, that allows you to run graphical apps on WSL, but I don't really run graphical apps anymore through WSL, so I kind of just don't use this term or this uh, program. Then for virtual desktops, yep, that's a cool one. Uh, a couple years ago, I used to use Dexpot for managing VMs, or not VMs, virtual desktops. But nowadays with Windows 10, I just use the built-in functionality that comes with Windows 10. For example, and you can try this right now, if you hold down Control Window Key and then hit the right and left arrows, you know, you can jump between virtual desktops. It's pretty seamless and it works in about one second. So if I do control windows right, it's like now I have this fresh desktop where, you know, maybe I can open up Windows Explorer or, you know, maybe I can keep some email tabs open so I don't get distracted when I'm working. And then I can go, you know, hockey back to where I was before and things just work. Like this is very, very handy. And I use this all the time in my day to day. Then for the code editor and terminal, uh, I used to use Sublime Text, but now I am happily using VS Code. And we'll go into the VS Code thing in a second. But also you can see here, you know, here's my terminal setup, like how it uh, progressed over time. You know, I'm using the default Ubuntu terminal now with Tmux. And also I did a separate video on SVFs with, whoa, ZFZ. <laughs> That's a crazy one to say. But yeah, no, I made a video on this one before showcasing like how you can reverse search your history in Bash. Like that's what this is. And uh, I also use that on a day-to-day -day basis and it's very, very, very useful. Uh, also, you know, there's a link here to my dot files on GitHub where you can get configuration for Tmux and Visual Studio Code, all of my Bash aliases and all that other stuff is up here. But now let's talk about uh, Visual Studio Code because your code editor is a very important aspect of what you do as a developer. Let me just go to one of my source code examples here. So I'm gonna go to my courses directory and then go to a Flask application that is a part of the Flask app that we build in my Flask course. So what I'm going to do first of all is open up this directory in Visual Studio Code. So I just launched that by writing code dot and then it's gonna launch Visual Studio Code all through WSL, even though Visual Studio Code itself is installed on Windows. Then I'm going to go back to my terminal and then I can just run Docker Compose up because all of my applications are running inside of Docker and I have Docker installed using Docker for Windows. So I'm bringing up the settings menu for that now. There's nothing fancy about this setup. I just shared a couple drives that I have and we can see Docker is running and everything just works. So five seconds after typing Docker Compose up, you know, this application is now up and running. Like this is the workflow I do when I'm developing any type of app. I go into the directory, I do Docker Compose up, I wait until I see the output of the program that it's running. And then now if I go to the browser and I go to localhost port 8000, you know, we can see that the Flask application is running. You know, this is the typical web development setup. You know, you go to your terminal, open up your code editor, open up a browser, and now you're ready to rock writing some code. So now let's talk about another thing that you'll want to do as a developer. You know, right now we're looking at the website in the full screen mode. And if I go back to Visual Studio Code, that's also running in full screen. And if I go back to my terminal, that's also running in full screen. But, you know, let's say that you want to see your code editor and the browser side by side. So what you could do with Windows is you can take your browser and just shake it to the left and then pick whatever window you want to go on the right, which would be, let's say, Visual Studio Code. 
And now if you drag it in the middle here, you can start resizing your browser and whatever window that you split on the right at the same time. Uh, this is pretty nice when you wanna see both things that you're working on at once. For example, let's go to this snake eyes folder here and I'm just gonna modify this title here. We're not gonna get lost in the woods when it comes to Flask stuff, but I'll go to this page template here for the home file. Then I'll bump up the text here just so we can read it. And here we see feeling lucky. I'm going to add some exclamation points because I'm feeling crazy. Then save the file, reload the browser. Oh man, I messed up there. I wanted to do it even faster, but I get hung up on the menu because normally I actually don't use Firefox, but I'm using Firefox now in this video because I don't want to show my URL bar for Chrome. Anyways, though, we can see that the title got changed to feeling lucky with the exclamation points. And if I remove that and then go over here and reload, we can see, wait, sorry, look, that wasn't a bug. That was just me messing up. Notice how the file is still unsaved because I forgot to save it. So I'm going to save the file, reload the browser, and there we go. Notice how it's basically instant, like as fast as you can go here and make your change, save the file, and then reload the browser, it just updates. So like the development workflow under Windows when you're using Docker, it's really freaking fast. Like I am not feeling like, oh, I have to wait 85 years for my container to reload through the volume. Like, no, it's really fast. And this is a pretty big Flask application. There's like 4,000 lines of code and like, you know, 20 different packages. It's running Postgres database, Redis using Celery. Like it is a legit application. You know, I also happen to run like Rails applications. I have this one Rails project for a client that I can't show on video, but it's like 18,000 lines of Rails code with like 70 top level, 70 top level gems in the gem file. Oh man, it's like a really big application. But when I make a code change in it, it happens instantly, uh, like within a hundred milliseconds. And page loading, like if I reload the page here in, in the Rails app, keep in mind, it's very, very fast. It's like under a hundred milliseconds. So the development experience is absolutely great when it comes to using Docker, Visual Studio Code, and WSL on Windows all together. So now let me just go ahead and minimize that. We'll full screen here. Oh, by the way, like right now you can see that uh, Docker Compose is running in the foreground. And like, this is where using Tmux is really cool because I can just do this and now I have a split pane. And then let's say I go back to this code directory, which was over here. You know, now I can start running my tests if I want to or any other commands. And, uh, you know, the web server on the left is still running. So that's pretty nice. So let me go ahead and just stop this now. Just hitting a control C <clears throat> hockey there. And yeah, Docker is no longer running. Like my whole entire dev environment for this project is now no longer running, which is pretty nice if I want to switch over to uh, playing some video games or something like that. So now let me go back to the browser here and we'll get rid of this page and we'll go back to over here. Yeah, so that's the setup for my code editor and terminal. Now let's go over some notable apps. So the first one is this program called Ditto, which is pretty cool. You can use it to manage multiple clipboards. For example, when you're dealing with Windows, you know, if I select that text and hit Control C to copy it, then let's say I want to select some other text like down here, I'll select that and then hit control C. Well, now this text is no longer going to be in my clipboard. Instead, this one will be because, you know, that's what I copied to my system clipboard. However, when you use a tool like Ditto, you'll actually get multiple clipboard items. For example, if I do a different hotkey now, we can see here all of the items that I copied to my clipboard before. There's a notable apps, and then before that, I copied some exclamation points and some other titles and whatever. Like, it allows me to go and access these other items that I copied. And this is very, very, very important in my opinion, if you're a software developer, because you're constantly going to man pages, documentation, stack overflow, copying things between files. And every single time you have to go back to stack overflow, wait, what did I Google for? It's like you're wasting a lot of time, but when you have a tool like Ditto, yeah, it makes it really nice with multiple clipboards because you can get back to that stuff instantly. Uh, then next up, we have this other tool called Key Piranha. Piranha. Yes, Piranha. 
it's some crazy Brazilian word that's, uh, I forget what it translates to. It's a pretty clever, clever name. But, uh, you know, when it comes to launching applications, you know, I'm never going to my start menu and then like hunting and pecking through my start menu trying to find programs. No. Instead, I hit a hotkey and then it's like, oh, I want to launch Firefox. I'll just type in fire and hit enter. And then it's like, hello, there's Firefox. Or, you know, maybe I want to run a Windows calculator. Okay, there is Windows calculator. Like you can just launch all of your programs here. And uh, it's really nice. Like I use this all the time. Uh, then for browsers, yeah, I used Opera a long time ago. Then I tried Firefox and I used Chrome. Now I use Chrome pretty much full time except for recording videos. Uh, then when it comes to doing training sessions here through, uh, by the way, in case you don't know, I am a freelance developer. I've been doing that for about 20 years. So a lot of times, uh, you know, I'll get on a call with someone and we want to do like a pair of programming session. I, I just use Google Hangouts. A lot of people give it a lot of flack, but it works pretty damn well. Uh, if not, Skype is a pretty good alternative. But there's this really cool Chrome extension that you can run Hangouts through as a custom application, so you don't even need to keep your browser open. Um, <clears throat> I cannot show that on video now because it has my personal friends list and things like that, but uh, this extension here is pretty nice. Uh, there probably Maybe there is one for Firefox, I don't know. I'm guessing yes, but you'll have to check it out. Uh, another really nice extension that works for Chrome and Firefox, which we'll see in a second, is this one called Momentum. So every time I open up a new tab here, I get this really nice like random screenshot that says like, good morning, Nick, because I put in my name, but uh, it's really nice. Like you can put in even like the main focus for today. And I, I much prefer to see this than like a whole bunch of recently opened pages that I saw. Like it just gets me in a good mood and these pictures all change every day. Even, I don't want to say per hour, but yeah, like I'll see a couple new pictures a day. It's nice. Then for IRC, I use this one program called HexChat. Uh, IRC to me is like, you know, it has like a special place in my heart as a developer. Like I grew up staying on IRC, chatting, you know, making some friends, like learning about programming. Like if you have a question about Ruby on Rails, like you can go to the Rails channel and there's 187 people here that will help you out. For example, there's the one for Flask and there's a big one for Docker too that has like 866 people. Um, when it comes to IRC, there's a lot of different clients that you can use. And I kind of like HexChat because it's pretty lightweight. It has a really good search, spell check. Uh, it's pretty good. I have no complaints. Uh, then for password management, I use this one command line tool called Pass, which I do run from WSL. For example, I just type in Pass. And then, well, I'm not going to show this on video either, but uh, the idea is you can have all of your sites here and you can have all of your strong passwords contained in this pass tool, and it'll just list out your password for the site, but you can also copy it to your clipboard directly. Like, it's a really nice tool for managing passwords from the command line. You know, then we have uh, finance tracking. You know, as a freelance developer, I'm constantly setting invoices and keeping track of money in different spots, incoming, outgoing, things like that. So rather than use Excel or something like FreshBooks or whatever, because I don't like having my billing information, you know, online so another company can just harvest that. I use this program called GNU Cash. Or is it New Cash? No, I'm pretty sure it's GNU Cash. Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, anyways, it's, it's a really cool application to track your finances. And then like when it comes to computer desk phone, yeah, this is just specific hardware that I have. Like that's the monitor I'm running, which is uh, 2560 by 1440. You know, that's what we see here in the background. Like my whole desktop is being presented from this monitor. It's really great. Uh, there's all the parts to my computers. I also have a uh, stylus for drawing slides and things like that for my courses, which is pretty cool. You know, this is other stuff isn't really important to uh, my Windows setup, but all this stuff is here if you were curious. Like that's the microphone I use and blah, 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 blah. But anyways, yeah, that's pretty much my entire Windows setup. Um, you know, we went over WSL. I'm running Ubuntu 1804. I have Docker for Windows install, Visual Studio Code, Tmux. It's all there. And uh, I have to say, like, <clears throat> you know, for a Windows-based development environment where I'm running Linux, I'm happy with this setup. And I really see myself using this for quite some time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got some value out of it. Maybe some of these tools you'll install and try on your own. And with that said, I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching.